Howdy, this is James Prey again with a SketchUp lesson that hopefully will be a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, just a little something that I think will be helpful to my friends. Um, yeah, so I am in need of a flying gantry for my Delta printer. Um, a flying setup, if you've never seen one, it suspends the extruder above the print head with a short uh, Bowden tube in between, the purpose being to get some mass off the print head um, so that it's uncoupled, basically. It, you know, it helps reduce vibrations uh, while keeping the extruder nice and close. Uh, anyway, I am ready to do a little experimenting with something besides my nimble and so I have gone ahead and bought myself a Bontech LGX large gear extruder. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so I already had a flying setup for flying the nimble. Um, you know, it's already a light extruder, but I thought, hey, maybe, maybe if I do a flying setup with that, uh, you know, it'll be lighter still. Um, it added a lot of complexity for very little gain, which made sense because the nimble is so light. Um, but I think uh, there are advantages to be had with a with an extruder that is actually driven by a motor um, right on it with metal gears. So we'll see. Anyway, um, so luckily I've got sort of the really complicated parts of the design already um, settled, but. I need to design a uh, you know a new central portion that will hold this extruder and the trouble is I don't have a model of one so but what I do have are technical drawings um, because I'm a SketchUp boy I can't import the step files so handily provided by Bontech but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show sort of my modeling workflow uh, for a you know a real world component like you know the process I follow to make you know vitamins like a stepper motor all you know all the the hardware I like to use anything that I've got to incorporate into my designs um, in this case I've got the the technical drawings that give me the dimensions uh, but this is exactly the same process I would follow if I had you know the physical device in my hands and I was just you know I would just start in that case with my calipers and gather all these dimensions on a little on a little sketch of the thing whatever it happened to be and you know, I would have had to do that before I got to this stage uh, but yeah it's it's pretty much just the same um, you know you don't have to be an artist to or an engineer I happen to be I guess something of both but you don't have to be an artist or an engineer to get this done you know just you don't need all the details of, of something that you've chosen to model from around your house. You just, you know, this is uh, roughly uh, not quite a cube, a little bit longer than a cube, but uh, if you're enough of an artist to draw a square and um, fit some calipers around something, you can get all the dimensions the same way and uh, get yourself going. So I am going to mock this up hopefully fairly quickly and and show you how I would tackle something like this. Um, so, first of all, let's get started with the, the general shape. Like I said, it is not quite a cube. Um, but So we've got a 42 millimeter uh, square along the long axis, and it is 50.65 millimeters long. They seem to be using, uh, they're measuring some things off of the the bore axis of the extruder and some other dimensions they are taking off the back so I will be doing likewise as I lay this out. So um, let's go ahead and start with a, a plane I just li I like to use a circle to start a plane because rectangles don't behave. So, and uh, if you can actually read my dimensions here, uh, you'll see that I'm, and you know this is 42 millimeters, but I'm entering 4200. This just because I'm modeling at 100x scale. So double click in there, and we'll turn it into a component. Hit 
hit G to turn that into a component. We're all set. Now I'll double click in there to start editing. So um, this will be the Actually, if I want to model this as it's shown in here, I shouldn't have started with that. Uh, so, okay. This is 42, and I would rather that it was 50.65. So what I'll just do, I will run a guideline out that far, and then I've selected this end line, and I'll just move it. There we go. Double check that that's the right length. 50.65 it is. And then use the push tool, extrude up. Now there is our square face. Um, now this has um, you know, a vertical axis of symmetry, so uh, I will probably go ahead and split it in half in a little bit to save myself a little modeling time. But um, We'll see exactly when I want to do that. I happen to know I've modeled uh, stepper motors uh, like this before. Looking at this shape, it looks like they have taken some pains to make this this plastic, like the gear train in here. They have modeled the shape of that housing to flow with the uh, size of this stepper motor, and that stepper motor is a NEMA 17. Uh, we do actually have the data sheet for that here as well. So. Um, I, what my plan is to you know model this uh, profile and just use that across the whole thing. Um, I do want to have some idea of where the stepper is and where the plastic housing is because um, I want to figure out the, as long as I'm at this, I want to figure out the center of gravity as well. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. Um, so let's start from the, we'll pretend this is the stepper end. I happen to know that with NEMA seven, normal NEMA 17s, uh, the corners are radiused uh, at a, they're, they're radius to a, to a center of, um, what is it, 5,000? Yeah, so 2,500, uh, that radius. So right, I'm going to set a nice high, uh, high poly count circle, like 96, um, doesn't have to be, you know, terribly high, but that'll give me, you know, a reasonable poly count on the ends. Um, yeah, and so there are our corners. That looks a little bit harder than uh, the drawing. Let's double check on... Uh, Yeah, that should work. Um, so I will crop, 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 use my push tool, cut one corner off. Now, if you've used your push tool once, the next time you use it, if you double click, it's going to uh, repeat the same amount. I wish that SketchUp had a lot more features that worked that way, and, uh, like repeat. It doesn't, um, but that is one. So. This tells us, so uh, bolt spacing is going to be uh, 31 across, 31 across. So we'll go, uh, not, not 1,500, 1,550, because double that would be, yep. So do, do, do. And those are M3. I'm not actually going to be printing. I, I might print this for mock-up purposes, so it'll behoove me to keep it solid. Um, but I don't need to worry about poly count on, say, you know, an M3 hole to make sure that it's going to be, um, it's going to fit. So one quick way to multiply things. This is this has got fourfold symmetry, so I can say. Say move it, rotate that 270 about this center I've created with my guides, and then hit slash three to create those corners. Um, I'm not planning on using these, so I'll make it just an arbitrary uh, depth 
hundred millimeters just to make sure that I know those holes are there. Um, if I was, you know, if you have to keep in mind of what you're planning to do with a part. Um, you want to make sure that you hit all the critical dimensions for what, you know, for your application. Um, in my case, the really critical stuff for me is, you know, the overall dimensions of the housing. Um, I need to know where all the potential mounting holes are uh, so that I can design around it. Um, and I'll also need to be thinking about uh, being able to access, you know, being able to access this for maintenance and uh, being able to work, you know, this is a pretension lever on this extruder. I will want to be able to get in there with my fingers. Um, so they don't really, they don't give much information on the dimensions of this. I will, I will be kind of guessing on that. But, uh, you know, I'll be able to get close enough that I'll be able to design a gantry around it. Uh, that'll work okay. All right. So to continue... I also happen to know that this is a 25 millimeter pancake stepper. So I am going to just uh, so double click to make, get that perimeter. Um, and I'm just going to move a copy of that perimeter along the body to uh, move it. I'm going to start moving it, type 25 millimeters to move that along. So now we have. <coughs> So this will be the body of the stepper, um, and just for just for giggles, um, I wonder if we can. Yeah, there's no dimensions for kind of the body, so I can guess. You know, I like things to kind of look <laughs> to look about right as long as I'm messing with it. It's not a huge value add for my time, of course, but <laughs> yeah, that's not super close, but closer than it was. So now we'll just go ahead and color the body of this maybe a little bit lighter, so it's a little. Want to be able to see this stuff. Okay, so there's our stepper that is going to have um, some kind of circle there in the middle, not sure what size, not having it on me. Um, I do have a stepper here with me, I could get kind of a ballpark. Like that's about nine millimeters, so yeah, that's a few millimeters deep. We can kind of get in there with a silver color. There. So I don't always <laughs> work with color this early in the process, but you know, I'll make good TV out of this, I guess. All right. So there is the, the stepper motor part of this all set. I don't need these uh, these guys. Get rid of those. Okay. So next up, important stuff. We've got these uh, these two mounting holes on the sides of that plastic housing. Um, and actually, those are measured. Those are given to us from the bore, so we should place the bore next before we worry about the mounting holes. So the bore is placed 42 and a half millimeters off the back. There we go. And I um, shouldn't assume it's centered, but they've got a center line there. Okay, yep. Snap that guideline to the center there. Okay. Also, no dimensions on those uh, inputs. I would wouldn't mind having that height and that height, but I'll be given those plenty of space in the design, so we'll just go with something that looks about right. Um, you can say that's about a centimeter wide. Does that look about right? 
Nah, too big. So, you can type in SketchUp, you can type and retype dimensions. Just hand D. Um, it's a little bit shorter than it is tall. I just made that 800, 8 millimeters. So, half centimeter, 4 millimeters, sure. Okay. And I'm going to drop a guideline through the middle of that. <clears throat> Just to generally, when I'm modeling anything that depends on, uh, you know, the center of a circle, uh, just because snapping to us the center of a circle can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Uh, I like to drop a guideline through the middle of it and kind of leave that there for reference. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this perimeter and kind of kind of build that profile a little bit just because uh, cause why not. I'm going to just kind of going by guess and by gosh here. What I'm doing here is I am so here is a profile or a, like a segment that is banded by a segment so if I shrink this it won't drag this into a like a weird shape, but I can do this without messing up. Uh, you know, so I've kind of constrained it with those extra, those extra circles. All right, and then if I want that to be like perfectly flat shelf, I move. I knew those those were a tenth of a millimeter apart, so I'll just click them, move them down now. Can know those are flat. All right, there's a bore. Um, so on the bottom, there's this Bowden coupling. Uh, I happen to have one of those already modeled. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a copy of that component. Um, even if that's not exactly the size they're using on this unit, it should be close enough. Um, and so here's something that I do. So this is a component in itself. This mock-up is a component. What I'm going to do is I am going to first. I'm going to get them lined up. Grab that center. Being sure we have the right thing selected. Grab that center. I'm going to slide that onto this. See, here's this axis coming in handy. Slide that onto there. Um, do this now, I guess. Uh, so. I'll select both of those and I'm going to make these into a component themselves. So that'll be like, you know, a group I can manipulate, move around. Uh, but I am keeping, I don't like to have, if I can help it, stuff that's in components uh, nested with like raw geometry. Um, like I wouldn't want to copy this component into uh, the space I was just working with to model that. LGX ASI and uh, go. So now you can see, now I can move this around as a unit, um, but within these are still separate. Mm -hmm. So it looks like this this portion there corresponds to that. This might actually be a little longer than theirs. And the only different, the main difference is that there's this uh, kind of shelf there. That looks like it's in the neighborhood of two millimeters. So. I'm going to project where this line is onto that surface with a tape measure, then go back the other way. 200. You know, alternately, I could have moved this to the surface and then moved it 200 out. Um, I feel like there, there are kind of two ways to work with, with modeling SketchUp, modeling in SketchUp. One way is to, like, guideline everything. Um, especially when you're moving things around, like if you're going to move something from point A to point B, um, you know, you put a guideline there and then move it on top of there. Um, but the the other way is to just, um, you know, move components directly. Like, like let's say I wanted a copy of this line I, that's you know, a thousand this way, I could, uh, you know, okay, make a guideline that's a thousand away from it. Or I could just 
you know, grab a copy of this and type in, you know, move it that far. You know, same difference in the end. And I, I feel like that that way is, you know, you, sometimes you can't get away without guidelines, but uh, uh, I feel like the, the doing it without guidelines when you can help it is a little more efficient. It's just, uh, it's kind of my go-to. Um, all right, so we can see that this, this circle kind of goes up to maybe a little bit past that chamfer there, and we're going to need to just kind of hazard a guess at what that looks like if we want to match the appearance, which is not necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's hazard a guess that that's two millimeters. So do that right. That should look about right. There, how are we doing? I see that they've got that mounted on there at a slight angle, so. Mm -hmm. I think two millimeters too aggressive. Now, none of this is actually important. Let's not stress about it. <laughs> get that hole in the top of this thing, just because we know there is one. Okay, now that we've got that, 8.15, we can take that dimension back that away. Now we can add our mounting holes. Okay, so great. Let's see. So we'll go to the center line of this. Looks like we need eight millimeters down, nine forty-five up. And the first hole is two and a half back. The second is eleven back from that. Okay, and those are M3. So if I was modeling this something where I wanted to actually screw M3 uh, screws into this, I would not make these uh, 300 mil or three millimeter diameter. I'm sorry, I'm used to thinking in hundreds, and I'm having to think about not talking in hundreds. Um, yeah, I think that radius is actually much harder than they've done with this. Uh, with this design, so I'm going to go ahead and go fix that in a sec here. Anyway, um, if I wanted this to be something that would print and have uh, M3 screws screw right into it, I would um, I would definitely not do exactly 300. I find that you know you sort of have to figure that out for your printer. Um, in my case, I found that maybe 298, 297 gives pretty good thread bite. So two point 2.97 diameter. Um, I'm on my other screen. I want to have a look at the Bontex site to see if they've got information about how deep these holes should be. Uh, mounting holes M3. I know they've got some information on this. M3 thread with 4 millimeter depth for the studs on the back. All right, well, let's assume that's how much we've got here, too. Okay, now, since these are, let's see, double check, two and a half, eleven, same dimensions, so I'm just going to, I will copy these circles across. I'm going to use a hotkey I did not mention in the other video, which is um, show or hide back edges. That's under view uh, for edge style. If you show back edges, then you can see it kind of gives you like an x-ray view. Um, 
that can make it easier to do operations like this where you're kind of working like, through your model. So I can drag that make sure it's going straight across there. Um, you do want to be careful though because when it's in this mode you can also erase, <laughs> for example, uh, geometry or you know otherwise manipulate geometry right through your model. Uh, can get you into trouble. Um, all right, so like I said, I feel like this is uh, this has got sharper corners than uh, the stepper I measured this off of. Maybe because it's a pancake and the other one is like huge. So let's see. This does not really offer any any hard information. Um, ruler on the screen, standby. Um, okay, so this is actually 44 millimeters on my screen, um, and that edge is about four millimeters. So, um, how much did I end up with? Oh yeah, seven. That's much too much. Okay, so going back, let's fix this. Um, I am dragging two lines off of that corner, um, so probably a little less, a little less than four millimeters. I don't know. Um, it does look like almost like it's not radiused. Um, could be that there's different parts link like different parts have different profiles on there. Um, so for simplicity's sake we'll just cut the corner. So I'm going to measure four millimeters off each side, cut that corner there, um, and then put a little radius on it. Seems to be the design uh, design aesthetic here. And uh, you know, like before, I will just go ahead and multiply that around the corners. 270 multiplied by 3, there we go. Um, and if we want this to look like a little bit more of a stepper motor, uh, eh, there. don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Going to be the quickest way to multiply my or uh, repeat my profiles here. <sighs> well, we'll just do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to select just this uh, profile, go all the way around. And then I'll just scooch that forward like I did before. This uh, like moving around of bonus lines was something I didn't figure out very quickly in SketchUp, and it's one of my favorite that uh, one of my favorite tricks um, just for quickly getting stuff done. There we go. Now we'll just. Uh, Get rid of all the bonus lines that gave us. is why you really shouldn't worry about painting your stuff too early. Then as you remodel you start worrying about, oh, lost my lost my color. Um, if you are working with a cranky model though, it can actually be handy to have color on the surfaces because um, sometimes uh, when your geometry is starting to get complicated, you're doing a lot of like intersections, um, you can start to run into issues where uh, 
like you, there should be one triangle in a given location, but there's actually uh, two or three on top of each other, um, which is a pretty serious hassle if you are um, trying to get a solid model that you can actually print. And uh, one way, right, so like when you have paint on the surfaces, that can actually alert you to problems like those as they crop up because um, they might take paint differently. Uh, another way that that can be detectable is like if you select a surface that, you know, it has some invisible lines on it, um, like you select it without invisible lines showing it should, you know, grab the whole thing. Um, if you've got multiplied faces like that, uh, you select a surface um, and like part of it doesn't select, yeah, that, uh, that can tell you there's a problem. Anyway, okay, that looks that looks a lot more like what we're dealing with. Okay, so other critical stuff on here. Um, this uh, this connector is pretty important. We'll want to know where that is. It says that that is uh, five tall, sixteen wide. Does not tell us how far back it goes. Um, roll it to the screen again. About nine millimeters. So. And the way they, they mount that uh, pins up, I imagine you could probably spin it if you wanted to. Um, right? Yeah, so I am going to... I will model this uh, the way it's shown. Um, probably be, uh, because the... Oh yeah, because this is going to be above the effector, I will want my, um, my wires going down. I said 900, you know, once again, going to just uh, lay this out with my handy dandy measuring lines, 16 and 5, so 8 millimeters either direction off that center line. Half a centimeter up. Um, of course, that's uh, the connector shape is a little more complicated than that. And I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> um, looks like there is uh, like a metal tab that is backing up the plastic connector. Uh, where'd that go? So, uh, something funny SketchUp does sometimes is that uh, when you're trying to move things, like move copies of lines, you can uh, have it happen where if you, usually like if I type a length right now, it should work fine. Uh, but what happened right there was that I started moving it, typed a length, and it disappeared. Um, I don't know why that happens. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pesky, but what can you do? Okay, and that metal that metal backing is a little bit a little bit wider than the connector, a little bit shorter. No, we'll just guess that the connector is a millimeter narrower, and that the connect uh, the backing tab is a millimeter shorter. Looks about right. Uh, and for reference, you know, any anything critical that. Um, you know that I'm. If I've got a design around it really closely, I uh, I will um, I will be much pickier than this about um, yeah, any any critical dimension where it's going to be intersecting. I will um, try to get as as uh, accurately as I can po uh, possibly get uh, with measurements off the actual thing. You know, so like this says it's 42 millimeters nominal. Um, like this, this technical sheet doesn't give any tolerances. You know, I would want to know what is the actual, you know, and I, I trust that, you know, say if they say that these holes are, you know, 11 millimeters apart, you know, that's pretty critical. I trust that they will, you know, I would model to 11 millimeters on the, on the nose. Um, but, you know, something like the length of this thing, it's a plastic housing on a, on a metal stepper motor. Um, if, if that, 
if I had to fit this perfectly into some slot, I would definitely want to get on it with my calipers and find out, okay, what you know, what do I actually have? Because um, clearly, clearly to them, that's that's not really a critical dimension. Or like if I had to design something exactly around these uh, these chamfers on the front, chamfers, chamfers, whatever. Um, I don't know. I hope my pronunciation isn't bugging you too much. You can always leave, I guess. <laughs> okay. So, actually, pretty close in terms of the critical dimensions. There are two mounting holes on the bottom I do want to model, even though I'm not planning to use those. I'm planning to do kind of a like a side mount uh, to get that in that zone. And I'll, I mean, I'll have to redo pretty much all of that. Uh, and this, if you are wondering, um, so these... Uh, these units have a pair of extension springs on them, little mini bearings inside, and these are actually um, like labyrinth type dampers. You fill them with silicon grease. Uh, and so instead of what you see in most uh, flying systems is you've got all this mass on, you know, most people opt for something simple like surgical tubing to mount it. Uh, and that, I mean, it is it is simple, it works great, but um, what you get is that uh, when that uh, gantry hits its resonant frequency with, uh, with that mass on those uh, surgical tubes, it starts to really wobble, uh, you know, uncontrollably. Um, that was a problem I did not want to get into. So instead, this is basically, it's a, it's a fully, you know, it's a spring damper system, it's a suspension. Um, and it works quite well, actually. Uh, so what you do, you've got, you know, the, the damper can extend and retract to um, to damp the spring motion, um, and then you just you fix it to the carriages and to the gantry with uh, with paracord. Um, and when I was running the nimble on this, uh, I've got a video up on that. It actually, you know, there's very very little uh, in the way of oscillation on the on the gantry, which is good. And the funny thing is, um, even though the, so the, the nimble by itself is uh, like 24 grams, uh, but, you know, so that's the, ma that's the mass you're hard bolting to anything. But then there is that steel drive cable, um, and what I found when I like threw a box of washers on my on my existing setup just to see how the springs would react. Um, <laughs> the deflection that I saw was about the same. So, you know, that, that steel drive cable still adds a lot of mass, even if it's not hard, uh, fixed hard to the effector. So, all right, where are we at? Right, get those two bottoms. So those are 13 and a half back from that, uh, from that center axis and uh, 23 apart. So uh, you can do basic math when you are typing in lengths in SketchUp. So if I want to do half of 2300 or 23 millimeters, I can just type 23 or 2 and that will give me 1150. Uh, So there you go. Uh, and now these are 23 millimeters apart. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so we've got the side mounting holes, the bottom mounting holes. We know where these back doodads are in case we uh, need them. I'm not planning to, especially since this will have, you know, it's going to have plastic mounts and that little stepper motor I, I hear can get toasty. Uh, my plan is to, you know, mount off of this and make sure that, uh, you know, that I, I might even stick some mini radiators on there if it seems like the heat's going to be a problem. Warm PLA does not play very well over the long term. You want to... Uh, if you're designing PLA, if you're designing parts for a printer and you're going to have them be PLA, you want them to last. They need to be beefy. Um, so, um, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean um, just uh, like using a lot of plastic. It means that they need to be over-designed for the forces they will encounter. Um, you know, so 
good design can uh, get you around the need to be, you know, super fat. Um, like this, this design is, uh, I will probably get a little beefier than this for um, the mounting for, for this. Um, I do like my little flyweight thing. I made little, like, little wing design for it that I really like, but this is probably going to be a little bit, uh, I, w I would have concerns about the longevity of that. Um, of course, uh, one way to find out would just be to print two, um, and then if it breaks, <laughs> I can quick switch to the backup and print something beefier for myself. We'll see. Okay, so this is that's pretty much it. This, uh, this is ready to design around. Um, now, so I'm going to go edit, delete guides, clean that up. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, that uh, plastic is there. We go. that plastic is uh, fairly dark, so yeah, let's just go ahead and paint the whole thing the main color. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now we've got all the critical like dimensions, but one thing I forgot was this um, tension adjustment lever. That is going to be important in terms of designing around. You know, I've got to be able to get my fingers on it, or I bet I won't be able to load filament. Um, we do have. It looks like a gear sticking out of the top right there. So I need to come up with at least a, a guess about that. So it says this is uh, this is 81.7 uh, from top to bottom. That's not a great dimension because I don't know exactly how long their fitting is. You know, if it's standard, and now that this is all painted up, um, you know, like having black uh, parts is kind of tough to work around. So I will turn off uh, turn off display of paint with. Uh, so that uh, I have that hotkeyed, but that's face style monochrome. So let's go ahead. And measure right off of there. What did I say? 81, 70. Yeah, so that is really quite high off the top of that. Um, which is an interesting design choice on their part. <laughs> uh, I mean, in my case, I don't have any, you know, 2.7 centimeters more than an inch out, like sticking out at the top of this thing, um, unless that's a lot longer than I think it is. Uh, but okay, um, so it looks like that is ruler to the screen. If I really cared about getting more dimensions off of this, I would load it into, you know, some art program where I could do selections, measure the pixels, but ruler to the screen says that that is Wait a sec. Oh, the this is not the same scale. <laughs> so this was about one to one here. I made a mistake. What what did I ruler to the screen to get dimensions? Okay, that's a little too much. Hundred percent. Yeah. So that's that's really really close. Actually, the one to one. Um, all right. It looks like their uh, their Bowden fitting is sticking. Uh, about ten and a half millimeters off the bottom. Wait, uh, ten and a half. I mean fifteen. Yeah. Now let's check that dimension before we do anything. Yeah. So that's actually not far enough down. This is why we double check. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, this fitting is not quite uh, not quite the same as theirs. Looks like that's about a 300 millimeter tall step. I made that 200. Nope. Okay. All right. Okay, measuring again. Looks like that lever is about 34 millimeters from the back, and it's about two millimeters thick at the base, five millimeters thick at the top. Oh man, now I've forgotten everything I just measured. <laughs> No, 34, okay. And actually, let's go ahead and make that its own component just uh, for the sake of keeping things a little bit neat. Um, and what I'm going to do... <coughs> so I'm actually going to model a, a vertical shape and then that'll be flat, and then I'll cut kind of a lever shape out of it. So, this needs to get, uh, needs to be as high as, wait, so this, that dimension is also out because I took it off the wrong thing. Eighty-one, seven. so that shouldn't be quite as high now. Yeah, it's not. All right. There we are. Boy, I think this video is getting pretty long. <laughs> Again, oh well. I'm not going to edit it. I am not going to apologize. Just going to do it. <laughs> Sorry. Shoot. <laughs> Guess I apologized anyway. All right. So that should be, yeah, so in that, what did I say, four, five, yeah, okay. Um, I'll worry about adding that uh, little gripper doodad in a sec here. Um, okay, so let's make this into a its own component. So this, <laughs> this from here is uh, pure conjecture, but at least we will know that it's about the right, you know, it takes up about the right amount of space, that's what matters. That's about 13 millimeters. So. Now what I want, I want to get that radius get a perpendicular off of here. Yeah. Okay. So we can go that high. Half of 1,300. Wait, what? Not, not half of 13,000. There. So what I want, what I want is to get an arc that just kisses that. Uh, I originally do uh, half of 13, uh, <laughs> 13 down from there. That's not quite right. Um, so let's do that. There. That should. There. And you 
you can see that that uh, goes just a little bit over the top. I don't care. Oh, um, let's see. Measuring off the screen real quick. Looks like that's about five millimeters. There we go. Um, and I mean, I can see that this has got like a little bit of a like a narrowing profile. I'm not going to worry about that. Not critical. And then so that goes. Oh, no, that's going to bug the heck out of me if we don't kind of match that. Uh. <laughs> oh. All right, about how much does that narrow? By about two millimeters. All right. So I'm going to draw a line up to that uh, two millimeters, and then I'm going to type a really long length to just be sure that it goes far enough. Um, get rid of this. Old. There. Now, of course, where on earth is that uh, that midpoint going to be? I don't know. Um, we can. So I want a ninety off of there, please. Thank you. Yeah, of course, it's not going to be a 90. Hmm. All right, well, what I'm going to do is just look for a smooth arc. Let's see. Actually, that is... How much difference is that? Maybe a tenth of a millimeter. That is... Good enough for government work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do. Great. And now the um, we can go ahead and kind of model that uh, the bottom of that. Or the not the bottom, the uh, the hand, the kind of rubberized handle thing that's going on there. Um, I'll just guess that that's about two millimeters. Yep. Yeah. There. We got some little bumpies we could model. I don't think we're going to. So that's five. So this is already 200. We need 150 or one and a half each side. There we go. Um, you can throw a little chamfer on that. Uh, got a reference picture there. Uh, This is why modeling takes me so much longer than I ever think it will, because I get all silly and picky about capturing too many details. Um, okay, just throw throw little corners on that. Use the follow me tool. Run that up and around. The oh, follow me tool tends to get weird around ends, <coughs> but I will show you how to fix that. Okay, so here. Now we've got problematic geometry. Check this out because this little end bit there, ext you know, extends back there. Now this, would, you know, we've lost our solidity. Oh no, everything's broken. But um, usually, so SketchUp, SketchUp thinks this is a line that is not really associated with this plane. But if we redraw it, you can see that just uh, like became unhighlighted. So that means it's not like an edge edge anymore. Just got to do that. And over here, SketchUp actually didn't make that line in the first place, so just got to draw it. 
make sure there's no hole. Yep, all good. So this is why I <coughs> the follow me tool needs to be used with caution. Um, but if you, you know, all you need is a little confidence to you know kind of rebuild geometry, and uh, it's it's really no big deal. Yeah, you know, put a little color on there. Make sure your gears look like happy gears. Okay. And to get that Bontech look, let's go ahead and just throw a little chamfer on the front. Um, kind of guess at the uh, profile here. Looks like about two centimeters on the width of that feature. Let's see if I get the inside. Well, yeah. Let's then I really, really, really got to quit worrying about it. <laughs> so we're almost at the hour mark. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just grabbing a few dimensions off the screen. This would be where I was. I like to have, you know, if I'm modeling from a physical object, I really like to have it on my desk <laughs> so that I can, you know, I can grab all the dimensions I can think of. And thinking of this thing from the you know, engineering or design standpoint um, whenever I'm modeling something new. But uh, you always forget things. And it looks like um, it doesn't. It looks like the front of that is flat, but then the, like these uh, chamfer sizes change a little bit. Um, not positive what is producing that. Um, anyway, it looks like this uh, looks like this pattern is repeated all the way around. So here is. Uh, And then we've got these uh, these four bolts. Those are repeating the uh, the NEMA spacing. They have uh, about five millimeter heads. So what I'm going to do here to save myself a little time, let's go ahead and grab the center of this. I know where to put it. Oh, it saved my work. That's a great idea. <laughs> uh. I've been very lucky in that regard, and now I've probably jinx jinxed myself. You know how it goes. I have no idea what this would be on this size head. Probably not that big. Sure. Okay, so there is our bolt head, and I'll just... Uh, Put a little gap around that. So there we go. Okay. So about how much are they cutting this in at the corner? It looks about two and a half. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model one side and one corner here, and then I will just. I will rotate it around to uh, to repeat my work. Um, a really quick way to do this would be to um, I mean I don't know, kind of depending on what you were doing. If this was like a production part, I expected to change more. I would probably actually break this face off into um, into sub components. Uh, you know, any geometry you can repeat that way. Of course, these aren't all quite the same. It's it's more like mirrored across that axis. So, well, 
So let's see. Looks like that. Yeah, that's a little too much. We're just going to do that and call it good. It's not a burden. It's not critical. I want it perpendicular to that, please. So, I'm drawing a triangle that I can get uh, the follow me tool to follow. I'm just going to worry about taking this. To the midpoint there. Okay, so. A little more fixing needed for this. Um, so, so this is kind of like folded in on itself. What I will do, just gonna re redraw this corner. Another reason to uh, you know, if I had gone all the way around, then this would have. Uh, you know, this would have happened at all four corners, and I would have had to fix it that many times. That's no fun. Okay, so if you need to clear out teeny tiny geometry, um, you can. Some, if, you know, if you can zoom all the way in, then you can uh, fix it that way. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you draw a small box, you know, and just select, you know, a little dangly off the end of a line, that can be a good way to do that. Okay, looking pretty good. Um, looking at that, it looks like clearly, you know, more complicated modeling than I'm goofing around with here. Um, I do kind of want to re uh, reproduce that uh, that cool kind of effect of the. I like the design of I like the uh, kind of design of this thing. It's appealing to me. Uh, there. So measuring that's about a that cuts about a centimeter in, and those uh, no points cut about uh, eight millimeters in. So what let's do, just drag, I'll switch this to fold mode, Oop, very fold. Does that look about right? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to fix those in a second. Uh, first though, Okay, so that is let's see. So one thing we could do. So they'd probably how would I've it's hard to see how exactly they um They achieved that with their model. Um, we could fold it like that. Not a huge fan of that, but that actually looks <laughs> actually looks kind of like the way they may have done it. So um, I guess we'll go with that and uh, just hide the crimes. <laughs> yeah, get rid of the. Um, But uh, can I tell you how many designs I have just spent ages on, like trying to, you know, which way should I fold each of these squares? That looks good. Okay, so here is uh, a case where, you know, I would like this to be flat, 
obviously it doesn't it's not critical in this case but um, you know I would like this to I'd like this to be flat and I'd like it to be flat in you know this direction like I want I mean this polygon here is not oriented right so I'm gonna draw a circle on that face and this intersection shows me okay where does this need to go okay now sketch up as it often does, has decided that uh, these lines don't uh, really belong on that plane, but they should. So, as you can see, when I delete that plane, uh, this becomes a hole. But if I did this right, all I should have to do is draw an edge. Yep. And uh, yep, that is a plane. So, there we are. Um, shoot. Yeah, they've, they've got something more complicated going on there, but uh, not worried about it. Okay, so now I've done that work. Um, don't want to do my work more than once, so I'm just going to drag a copy of that off. Vertical mirror. Drag it in there. There you go. Okie dokie. Near. Gonna do that real quick. Uh, this corner up here that I fixed. Now we can just uh, delete this. Uh, <laughs> not quite a free pass. Filling in some lines there. Dude. Great. Okay. So that is looking uh, pretty good to my eye. Yep. So let's go ahead. And copy it around. Why on earth did I think this would be shorter than the other one? I uh, sometimes I am a silly beast. Okay. Hopefully SketchUp is going to play nice. Forgot this part. That's okay, we'll rebuild it. Okay. Just get rid of these. Now it's really just a matter of clearing out the stuff we don't need. So another common SketchUp issue, um, you know, we there's like multiple planes stacked up here. We don't want that. So, but if I draw a line here. There. Now that's connected and convinced SketchUp to kind of marry those together. Um, sometimes, so if that doesn't work, the next thing to try is to start drawing lines from the edge, like the perimeter, uh, to whatever it is. Um, this may or may not end up being a good showcase of kind of working around some of those issues. Looking good. Um, And uh, on the real unit, um, these actually only come to like the top and bottom only come to like half depth. How would I do that? Okay, um, I could try this. Just go from midpoint to midpoint. Looks about right. So, uh, once again, we'll just uh, use a, you're not quite one that big, um, use a temporary circle to extend our plane. Uh, this time I'll just show you using the, uh, the intersect function instead. There we go. So I selected those three, said intersect on selection, all good. 
Just got to get rid of our... Uh... The nice thing about using circles for that purpose is that usually uh, SketchUp treats them as a unit, so you find one edge and you know, go to erase it and it all goes away. Uh, you know, other ways you can do that and you know, extend a plane um, is to just, uh, you can run, you know, lines off the ends of space. Okay, so That looks good. Just copy our copy our work to the other side. Boop. Fill in the hole there. There we go. Clear out the internals. We are all set. Okay, so last stuff. I won't promise this is the last stuff. I'll probably find more, but it uh, should be the last because I need to actually get on to the rest of the design work that I'm not going to record. Yeah, see, so this is definitely something that would have been quicker if I had made subcomponents all the way around. But, uh, in this case, it's kind of not super simple, but not super complicated either. Um, and it was a good way to kind of showcase how to use that uh, geometry duplicating to get this job done. Okay. Let's get rid of all those guides in the way. So, that... Let's see, yeah. I think that's going to do it. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, no idea if this will help you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my workflow for modeling stuff. Now I can, uh, now I can go ahead and figure out how I am going to you know, ram this thing in here. good times. Actually, not, not super different, so um, I think this is going to turn out pretty well. That's my hope. All right. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's it. Thanks for coming along.